It's a Sun Belt West showdown. The Texas State Bobcats hosting the Louisiana Raging Cajuns. It's locked on Sun Belt. You are locked on Sun Belt, your daily podcast on the Sun Belt Conference, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. All right, Dave Schultz, locked on Sun Belt, your team every day. Today's episode brought to you by FanDuel. You can start the season with a big return on FanDuel. New customers can place a $5 bet and you'll get started with $150 in bonus bets. If you win your first $5 bet, visit FanDuel.com to get started. All right, Dave Schultz, locked on Sun Belt, your team every day. Huge nationally televised ball game between the Bobcats and the Cajuns. Of course, I'll need help previewing this one. We bring in my buddy Cody Juno, the radio analyst for the Louisiana Raging Cajuns radio network. What's going on with the Cajuns this year? Defensively, they had a little bit of a blip. Offensively, they had a little bit of a blip. Maybe played their best game on the road in a 10-point victory over Coastal Carolina. What do they do against Texas State? What's happened to Texas State this year? Have given a couple of games away. And how does the Cajuns react to what Texas State is doing? It's going to be a great ball game. It's going to be even a better podcast. He is Cody Juno, radio analyst for the Louisiana Raging Cajuns Radio Network, and he is locked on Sunbelt. All right, welcome back to another edition of Locked On Sunbelt, your team every day. Dave Schultz, along with Louisiana Raging Cajuns sideline reporter. Oh, no, Cody Juno has been promoted to color analyst on the Cajuns radio broadcast. We're going to preview the Cajuns and the Bobcats. Huge ball game tonight, a Sunbelt West showdown. Uh, all kinds of implications. Texas State wins. There's a five-way tie for first. Uh, if the Cajuns win, they are in first alone, and Texas State not quite eliminated from uh, the Texas, the, uh, the Sunbelt West division title. Uh, all right, so let's talk a Raging Cajuns. It's been an interesting season, uh, Cody. They only have one loss, uh, that to Tulane at home. We'll get into that later. Uh, they went out and beat Wake. They had a couple of sloppy ball games, and then maybe they're coming off uh, their best performance of the season. Uh, how would you grade uh, the Raging Cajuns, and are they living up to expectations? Well, I think when you talk expectations, right, six and one, bowl eligible on the 19th of October, uh, as whereas this team's had to wait the last, you know, to the last game each of the last two years. Um, this is what Michael Desmo envisioned, right, when he got the job uh, taking over for Billy Napier. And it, it's happened a little bit slower than certainly Cajun fans would have liked, and, you know, admittedly, Coach Des, too. But when you look at the way he's been able to build this program, a lot of signs were pointing towards this year coming into the season. The question was, okay, there's a lot of talent. Where's the maturity? Can they kind of find a way to close out ball games? And and they've certainly done that. You talked about that Wake Forest game uh, where they were able to close that one out. And, you know, even the, the kind of sloppy games you mentioned, I think Southern Miss, you look at it and, and you say, well, you know, the Cajuns kind of just decided they had to settle for field goals, right? Which they're not going to be able to do well, tonight against it, Texas State. In both those, yes, that's right. In both those, um, you know, not the best play, not the sharpest offensive ball games yeah. against um, uh, App State and uh, Southern Miss. The defense was spectacular, one way or the other. Correct, correct. And then you know, look in that Southern Miss game, they were able to just in the second half, especially say, "Hey, we are just going to run the football and we're going to get out of town." You know, at a place Cajuns had won since 1989. Uh, right. I, I was in diapers, right? So it was just get out of Dodge with a victory, and they were able to do that and. Uh, last week, right, the test, you know, uh, go out, get out to a 14 nothing lead. And then Coastal makes the quarterback change. And I don't know that Kim really sparked them all that much as much as they just started running the football, right, which has kind of been a bugaboo at times for the Cajuns. Uh, but what he did do was hit people that were open, which Ethan Vasco was just struggling with, and, and they made the change. And so, um, you know, but credit to really, I think, the Coastal defense, they come out, it's, it's a close ball game. At the, at the break, and then they forced the Cajuns into a pair of two and outs. Uh, mm. And the Cajuns give up a score, but then in the fourth quarter, Cajuns own that quarter. And, um, you know, here, here we sit on the heels of a massive ball game uh, in the Sunbelt Conference here this evening. All right, so let's go back because you, you're going to know this better than I, I will. But coming into the season in spring ball and uh, in, in fall practice, um, Mike Desmo was headlining one guy specifically defensively, and that was Cortland Flowers. And he gets thrown off of the team. We're not going to go into that. It is what it is. But what that does is it shakes up the defense. Someone's got to take Cortland Flowers' position, uh, and then someone off of the bench moves into that position. It's always next man up, yada, yada, right. yada. But now two guys are in a new position. 
uh, compared to what had been before. And I think that definitely played into uh, the Tulane game and maybe the Wake Forest game because the defense, it's the number one defense in terms of yards allowed, uh, was not particularly good in those two ball games because I think guys were in new positions, you know, a few games into the season. Yeah, I mean, certainly it's been an adjustment, right? Uh, but I think Coach Jim Salgado and that defensive crew, uh, the Cajuns' first-year defensive coordinator, have done a really good job. I saw them make another change at Coastal Carolina last week, moving Keon Martin inside into the slot and bringing out another field corner uh, in those obvious passing situations, letting Amir McDaniel kind of take a breather. Uh, and so I'm interested to see against this, this high-powered Texas State offense what the Cajuns' defense does uh, in those situations, because we know GJ Kenny and his crew, they're going to throw it. They're going to run it. They've got a bunch of toys and weapons. And so that's going to be one of the chess matches to keep an eye on this evening. Talking to Cody Juno, the color analyst for the raging Cajuns radio network. He is locked on Sunbelt, your team every day, previewing the Cajuns and, uh, the Bobcats. All right. So you mentioned, this is what Mike Desimo had envisioned. Uh, he knew what the program went through the last couple of years, but he, uh, Fully admitted, freely admitted that this was the year yep. and kind of breaking it down. You know, it, it kind of surprised everybody when the over under for win total was like eight and a half or eight, eight and a half. Even Cajuns fans were like, what, wait, what, what, what's going on? <laughs> and then even I went back and said, you know, are they um, underrated or overrated? And then you realize they got a running back room and they got a wide receiver room. And they got a tight end room and the offensive line is experienced and the defensive line is experienced and they got linebackers and the defensive backfield is experienced. Yeah. The only thing was the quarterback, and when you know it, Ben Waldridge has stayed healthy, and he's right smack dab in the middle of player of the year contention. Well, and, and the experience too, right? The key for both Ben and Chandler was could they stay healthy? And, you know, knock on wood to this point, the Cajuns relatively as a ball club speaking at this point in the season are, are very healthy. But, no, I, you're absolutely right. The job that Ben Woolridge has done, Dave, uh, in his decision-making, right, four interceptions, and the job that the offensive line have done allowing him time – to make those really good decisions, right? Think about that play that, that uh, you know, Woolridge was able to hook up with, with Terrence Carter on last weekend to kind of seal the deal at Coastal Carolina. A little bit of pressure, Ben felt it, moved, climbed back the pocket. Terrence and just broke it off, was running a corner out on one side of the field and was, was able to hightail it across. And you're seeing the talent that everybody knew was on the roster really obviously start to, to show itself, but it's also the maturity and it's the, the decision-making that we've seen specifically out of the Cajun offense um, and that's allowed them to, to be at this point, you know, with this six and one record. As someone who may or may not have had uh, some, uh, a little wager on that uh, game against North Carolina, uh, against coastal Carolina, it's amazing how thin those wins really are. Oh yeah. That was definitely going to happen. The cage were definitely going to cover right. because if Terrence Carter falls down or is tackled, that may end the football game. They don't give the ball back and they may not score a field goal and it may not put it in the end zone. They just may run out the clock. Well, the gambling gods give it in Coastal Carolina. They take it away at App State uh, if you had the hook or not. And so, um, you know. I think I got to push. Yeah, I think I got to uh, push yeah, in that yeah. one. Yeah, okay, I didn't so have the hook. Yeah, yeah that's a tough yeah. one. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> maybe, maybe, you know. No, I think I covered. I went the other way. Because, oh, okay. uh, yeah, because, you know, the Cajuns weren't going to get it done. And then they got they got the fifth interception and scored a that's touchdown right. off of it. So, yep. yes. So, we've done well. Uh, with the Cajuns, I believe they are three point underdogs in this ball game. Yeah, I've Coming seen up. it. I think at, at three and a half, three, three and a okay. half in there. Uh, that, so uh, not surprising to me. I think kind of not right surprising. Home team is going to get yeah three yep. points. And yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it should be just an absolute thriller um, because, as you kind of previewed, right? There's so much at stake for both of these ball clubs. And you know, I thought last week's win at Coastal Carolina put the Cajuns in contention to host a Sun Belt Conference title game. Uh, now, notwithstanding, you clearly have to go on and take care of business, but this was the one that everybody has circled as, you know, the, the, the potential um, winner of, of the West. However, as you pointed out, should Texas State win, then everybody is tied. Yeah, yeah I'm not. No, don't get me West. started with Sunbelt tiebreakers. My head's going to hurt instantaneously. <laughs> I'll worry about that. Uh, when the time comes, we're talking. Let's take a time out. When we come back, we'll continue our conversation with Cody Juno, Raging Cajuns radio analyst for the uh, radio network. Uh, what's gone wrong with the Texas State Bobcats? They're coming into this ball game with three losses, and yet a win puts them right in the mix for a Sun Belt Western Division title, which would put them right there for a Sun Belt Championship opportunity. Uh, we'll do that after we tell you about Roy.
Hey, Sunbelt fans, it's time to recognize the Roy Player of the Week. So far this season, we've pulled over $20,000 to support players on Roy. Micro deposits lead to massive change. And with the Roy app, you can direct your support to the athlete you love, ensuring that all funds go to the specific player you choose. Unlike collectives, you know exactly where your support is going, and you even receive exclusive content like personal videos and updates after the season. The best part? It's risk-free. If the athlete transfers or doesn't deliver the content, you get your money back. This week, I'm supporting Old Dominion quarterback Colton Joseph. Five touchdowns against Georgia Southern. And I just pitched in $100, and I'd love for you to join me. Even $10 makes a difference. So let's show Colton Joseph the love and keep him connected to ODU. Remember, pay today, celebrate tomorrow. Your support sets your team up for success. Plus, don't miss out on Roy's exciting giveaway. Win two tickets to a game in November. Just download Roy, create an account, and enter referral code locked on and you're entered. Already on Roy? Any contribution to an athlete's campaign also gets you entered automatically. No purchase necessary and void where prohibited. Download Roy now and join the NIL game with no subscriptions and no fees. And be sure to check us out on Instagram, Facebook, and on X at Roy. Roy, support the players, change the game. All right, Dave Schultz, Lockdown Sunbelt, your team every day. Let's continue our conversation with the color analyst on the Raging, Raging Cajuns Radio Network, Cody Juno. What's going wrong with Texas State uh, this season? And yet they're still in a mix with a win against the Cajuns. He is Lockdown Sunbelt. He is Cody Juno, the color analyst for the Louisiana Raging Cajuns Radio Network. Time comes. We're talking to Cody Juno, radio analyst for the Raging Cajuns Radio Network. He is in San Marcos getting ready for the Cajuns and the Bobcats. All right, so let's look at the Bobcats from the Cajuns' point of view because it feels like, to me, the Bobcats are in this season the way South Alabama was last year. Ton of talent, ton of potential, but they have not kind – they haven't lived up to it. I thought they should have beaten Arizona State. They obviously let Sam Houston uh, get away, Mm -hmm. and they got beat by – it was ULM, right? No, uh, not no, they have not played ULM yet. Uh, it was uh, they went on the road to Old Dominion, which look, Old Dominion. They got beat by was, Old Dominion. Was there uh, twenty four to fourteen? Yeah, so, was there a season ago, and and we saw what what Old Dominion did to Georgia Southern on, on Thursday yes, night. Well, we sure did. Uh, one, I think ODU, the Monarchs, right, lost a bunch of close games early on, and maybe they have something figured out with the freshman quarterback. But they right. play really good defense, and then and that's a long trip for the Cajuns. It's an even longer trip for the Bobcats, and so. I think on the surface, you, everybody's kind of scratching their head as to as to what's going on. But I think you probably need to give a little bit more credit to the Monarchs than than not. Um, but when you look well, at, I thought at Texas, that was. I'll be honest with you. I I agree with you that they deserve more credit. But that had trap game written all over. Texas absolutely, State was a double yep. digit uh, favorite on the road. They got the Cajuns coming up. ODU, you know, have Just all of a sudden about, yeah. a bunch of uh, games in a row. But, uh, you know, it had not looked good. Well, had struggled to get victories up until that point, And they have turned the season around for sure. Now they're four and four. Uh, but that had trap game written all over it. Um, I stayed away from it. Probably should have taken ODU. But it just feels oh, like, <laughs> in hindsight, right? It still feels like Texas State, you know, has that potential. But for whatever reason, I don't know what happened to South Alabama last year. And it kind of feels like the same thing is happening uh, to Texas State. Well, and that was the one question I had coming into the season for Texas State, right? They come up, they have a great year under under Coach Kenny in his first season and, you know, candidly surprise everybody, right? And now how do you handle the expectations? How do you handle the bullseye being on, on your back? And um, and for me, that was the biggest question because we knew how talented they were, right? They, I mean, plug and play at the quarterback position with the brain of Sunbelt Conference Player of the Year, They've got all these toys on the outside. I mean, they get after the quarterback like nobody's business. Um, you know, I mean, they do all a, a lot of these things, yet th- there's something about pressure and and never having been in a spot and understanding how how to win and, and do those sort of things. And so uh, that comes with a learning curve. I don't – nobody wants to hear that, right? But I just think well, that that's kind of diff- the reality of – yeah. Yeah, there's a difference between being the hunter and the hunted. Absolutely. Everyone's coming to give you your A game, right? And G.J. Kinney is one that may run it up. He may go for it when maybe he shouldn't and keeps the ball away from you. Um, I'm not sure if that rubs coaches the wrong way or players the wrong way. But, uh, you know, know, he's, he's 
very confident, if not cocky, and he wants to light up the scoreboard, and he's been very successful at it. And so when you keep him off the scoreboard, I I presume that's going to mm-hmm. make the other coaches and the players very happy when you can uh, bring them down a peg. And, and, you know, I think something else to factor in, and I don't know how much you can you can measure it, right? But in today's day and age of college football and the transfer portal, sus- building and sustaining a culture, right, especially in, in only a coach's second year, I mean, when yeah. you've got that much churn coming in and out, those things can be difficult, and we can kind of see themselves manifest themselves on the field. You can look across the country, right? As good as the, the portal is for player movement and, and freedom and all of those good things, that is, I think, part of the price that, that programs will, will pay from a, a year-to-year basis. I mean, look at what's happening in Tallahassee right now, right? Uh, and, and so you add all of those together, and, and I think potentially there's a, a, an answer for why you know they are wh- where they are, which, again, their season is <laughs> – it's not like it's been a loss. They're just to your point, there's been a couple of, of head-scratching performances. Well, disappointing losses, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I would say you know Arizona State and Sam Houston That's much game, more than ODU. Both of those games, you feel like they let themselves they let get away as opposed to, to Old Dominion. Uh, yes, they got beat by Old Dominion. The other ones they should have won. What about? Uh, and we're talking to Cody Juno, uh, Raging Cajun sideline reporter for the. Uh, I'm sorry, radio analyst, color analyst right. for uh, the radio network. What about the idea that this this? I mean, the whole quarterback thing was a mess, right? They were waiting for TJ mm-hmm. Finley to make a decision. He finally makes a decision. G.J. Kinney can't wait for him to make a decision, so he's got to find another quarterback. Right after T.J. Finley says he's coming back, Kinney gets another quarterback. He's got off-field issues. T.J. Finley says, I'm out of here. Then they got to get rid of the other guy. They got a little bit lucky, if not a lot lucky. Like you said, Jordan McLeod was sitting right there. Yep. Do you think there was a uh, any issues with the other guys? Like, what, what are we doing here? Why didn't this get done? Because – It just felt like, I don't know what TJ Finley's situation was, but it just felt like, you know, he could have been uh, a Desmond Trotter for South Alabama, right? Been there forever under, you know, three, at least two coaches, and now is working full time in the athletic department. That's what TJ Finley could have been like. Um, And yet it, it just didn't work out. Do you think that whole mess affected the locker room whatsoever? And I have no idea. Yeah, no, I mean, I don't either, right? Not being around the, the Texas State program on a day-to-day basis, right. I think kind of... That wasn't a very you, fair question, I'll admit that. <laughs> <laughs> kind of what you just laid out, right? A lot of people were right. watching that whole saga unfold. And, I mean, I think you have a, a coach trying to improve his roster, right? And in today's era right. of college football, you can certainly go pick and pluck and, and pull guys from here and there. And um, I, you know, again, I think if you ask G.J. Kenny, could he have handled that situation better? I would think he would would say certainly um uh, but but no I, I don't know if you can point to that as much as to point to that and say that's where we are in 2024 well i certainly don't have a problem with him going after a quarterback you can't wait you know you have to have a deadline you need to have a quarterback going into spring ball and you know some things probably you know like you said could have been handled a little bit better we're talking to cody juno uh the uh, radio analyst for the raging cajuns radio network he is locked on sunbelt your team every day one of the things that we're wondering about gj kinney coming into the season was you know we ask players to get better and players to mature and we're kind of seeing that with like jalen rayner right uh it hasn't been super consistent but when things aren't going particularly well in jonesboro he's led them to three come from behind uh victories which we like to see uh whereas you know Texas State should have beaten the Cajuns last year. And one of the key plays was at the end of the first half when they went for it on fourth down uh, and didn't get any points. And earlier this year, they're going for it on like their own, I don't know, 27 yard line or, you know, 33 yard line um, when Sam Houston is coming back and they don't get it. And Sam Houston goes in for a quick a score. You know, where are we, what, I mean, what is, what has Mike Desimo said about that? Because, Anywhere and everywhere is four down territory for G.J. Kinney and the Texas State Bobcats. Just because well, you get off the field on third down does not mean you're off the field. Well, I mean, look, that's Coach Kinney's philosophy, right? Uh, you know, the throttle is going to be down at, at all times, and, and he's going to live with that, right? And, and certainly I would imagine the percentages say that it works out far more than it doesn't. And when it doesn't, as, as the head coach, those are things you have to answer for. But, no, I mean, that's part of the challenge with Texas State, right, that the Cajuns are going to have to be prepared for because it's it's a four-down, fast-paced, you know, super-tempoed offense that, to your point, from anywhere on the field, you stop them on third down, you probably got to be right, prepared and ready to go for, for fourth down. And so that's one of the challenges that the Bobcats prevent or present rather 
um, of where it just anytime, any place, almost on the field, right? Uh, they're they're going to go for it. And, you know, so I, I think your best case scenario, right, if you're the Cajuns defense is, you know, you want key an- analysis right here. Keep them behind the sticks, right, Dave? Um, and, and see, uh, and, and see how they have to play. And if they get to kind of a, you know, position, a field position type game. And because once the Texas state, that's the thing, when the Bobcats get rolling, it's a snowball that moves downhill and it moves downhill really quickly with their offense, right? They're going to score and score in bunches. And so that's a big key for the Cajuns is to not let Texas state kind of get that momentum moving, um, which they were able to do at times in that game, uh, at Cajun field a season ago. At times we saw Texas State, right, use that tempo and and really, you know, kind of be able to, to go down the field and, and score. And uh, it's a, it's one of those, you know, it's few on the, I think, pop, is it, was it the only one score game that the Cajuns were able to win a season ago, right, mm-hmm. late? And and so, uh, you know, that was a thing, a point of emphasis for Coach Dez and his staff this year. And, and that's something that they've, they're winning these close ball games and, you know, we'll see what happens tonight, but that's definitely a key is to, to try to slow them down and keep them far behind the sticks because, you know, once you get in that third and five, fourth and five range, anything's on the table. Keep it behind the sticks. He's not the best color analyst in the Sun Belt for nothing, folks. All right, let's take one more time out. When we come back, we'll complete our conversation with Cody Juno. We'll talk about how the Cajuns will react to what G.J. Kinney and the Bobcats will be doing. Will Mike Desimo do anything differently? And how the running game has changed a little bit, maybe for more passing game for the Raging Cajuns. We'll do that after I tell you about FanDuel. Get ready to tackle the NFL action with FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. Because right now, new customers can bet $5 and get $150 in bonus bets if you win. The FanDuel Sportsbook app gives you everything you need to place live bets on the NFL all in one place. So when you get a hunch in the middle of a game, you can check out the latest stats, view live play-by-play, and so much more on the same page where you place your bets. Visit FanDuel.com to join today. You'll get started with $150 in bonus bets if you win your first $5 bet. That's FanDuel.com. Never waste a hunch and make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sportsbook partner of the NFL. All right, Dave Schultz, Locked On Sunbelt, your team every day. Uh, let's finish up our conversation with Cody Juno. how uh, the Cajuns have done things a little bit differently, not necessarily just trying to ground and pound the football. Uh, and how will Mike Desimo react to what the Bobcats are going to try? He is the radio analyst for the Louisiana Raging Cajuns Radio Network. He is Cody Juno, and he is Locked On Sunbelt. Folks, he's Cody Juno. Radio analyst for the uh, Raging Cajuns Radio Network. We're previewing the Cajuns and the Bobcats. So uh, let's let's take what GJ Kinney does and put that back on Mike Desimo. That ch- does that change what he does, or is he just going to wait for the game to develop before he may do something that he doesn't normally do, where he goes for it, you know, oh. deep in his own territory? And when I say deep in his own territory, I'm talking about you know inside the forty. Anyone you get to midfield. Right. If you want to go for it on fourth and two, go for it on fourth. I mean, look, Coach Des is, I would argue, as aggressive as anybody, right? Uh, when it comes to that, the, the play style is different, right? The Cajuns run the football, a lot of, you know, bootlegs, neckets, uh, those sort of things, as opposed to Texas State kind of get out, let's run, right? Uh, and, and so it may look different, but the, the Cajuns are, are quite aggressive in themselves. Now, what I would tell you is, I think that what the season has proven is that Coach Des has a lot of trust in that defense, right? That Cajuns defense um, has has come up in a number of, of big key stops. Maybe not in the course of a game when when Cajun fans are you know screaming and and but they they've seen thus far to have a knack to find a way to get a huge stop. And so you know I I would think that the Cajuns would err on the side of of you know field position in that situation. But honestly, the the game's going to dictate. Uh, you know how aggressive Coach Des is or isn't. What are the tr- what are the Cajuns trying to do offensively? Because it, it feels like we were told how good they are running wise, and all the stats that if they run, I think it's like forty times for one hundred eighty right. yards. They have this huge winning percentage. Whereas if you know they can pass it for 200, 300, 400 yards, there's no rhyme or reason to their uh, ability to win a football game. Uh, and have we had a change in, or, or are we still rotating it? Because it was Draylon Washington. I think he got banged up a little bit. Then yep. it was Zylan Perry. Bill Davis just had a big ball game. Where where do we stand? Where do the Cajuns stand with their running back? Uh, and is there, 
is there a set guy or do they just take, you know, the hot guy as they move along? Correct. I mean, it, look, you know, as well as I do, right. Cajuns for as long as you were in Lafayette, you know, even before there's always seemed to be a stable of, of running backs, right. Where they're going to mm-hmm. rotate those guys in and uh, each one of those backs does slightly something different, but they're all capable of, of doing very similar things. I think, you know, we talk about maturing and, and changing and evolving, you know, Coach Dez and Coach Tim Leger said this early on in meeting with the media uh, at the start of fall camp. They're just not going to run into bad boxes, right? As where in the past, they might have just tried to pound the football, pound the football, pound the football. Because of the talent that they have outside and the decision-making that I've talked about with a senior quarterback in Ben Woolridge and the job that the offensive line has done protecting Ben, if the numbers dictate to get the ball out to those toys outside, they're going to do it. Now, there's still, again, the core and the DNA of, of Michael Desimo, even though he's a quarterback, right? He wants to run the football. He understands winning starts and stops in the trenches on both sides, right? You got to stop the run and you got to be able to run the, the football at some point in the ball game to win it. And so that still at its core is who the Cajuns are and what the Cajuns want to be, but they're not going to run into bad boxes. And, and we've seen some of that, whether it's Terrence Carter's emerger. You know, uh, emergence. You've seen Caden Jensen, a freshman, retro freshman tight end. You know, pop Uh-oh. up in a few key spots. Two, I know two, two tight ends. ends. I, I, well, two I'm on. Ends. I'm on. I'm on locked on Sunbelt. I figured I had to That's make right. a tight end reference for you I here, appreciate sir. That. Um, but then, I mean, you just look outside, right? We've seen Lance Lejean's emergence, Harvey Broussard. You know, Jacob Bernard. Uh, you know, the list kind of goes on and on. We've seen Tavion Smith and and a couple other guys, Jaden Johnson come in and, and do big things at, at different times. So they they feel like they have a lot of matchup advantages outside. And when the numbers dictate, they're going to get the ball outside. And so I think that's kind of the only shift is whereas the past, maybe they would have tried to run the ball into some, you know, some stronger boxes, but they're, they, they're going to put the ball in their playmakers hands uh, any way they can. So d- there is a little bit of difference between, you know, when I followed and when I got to the Cajuns, there seemed to be one lead back. And then somebody else from Alonzo Harris and Elijah right. McGuire, then Elijah McGuire, and then Trey Regis, you know, and then the others, and then Elijah Mitchell, and then the others. This one seems to be a, a rotating guy, whoever seems to get going. It had been Draylon Washington. Is he still banged up? It had been Zylan Perry. And again, again, I think Bill Davis had the big ball game yep. against Coastal. Yeah, Bill Bill kind of had the, the big ball game. Zylan Perry uh, had, I think, kind of been carrying, a, I don't want to say a bulk of the load, right? But uh, and he got a little banged up in that coastal game, and so it was it was Bill and, and Draylon Washington who's back, and uh, yeah, Bill just kind of seemingly had the hot hand, and so the Cajuns were able to, to to give him the football and feed him uh, to help close that one out up on the uh, on the Smurf turf. On the Smurf turf, he is Cody Juno, radio analyst for the Raging Cajuns Radio Network. All right, give me a key player outside of well, let's do defensively. Who do you think if the Cajuns are going to be? successful and and beat texas state for how many times in a row as they've never lost to texas yeah um but i'm not going to mention that number okay all right um i'll I'll let you look it up it's uh that's fine uh but we'll just put it it down there it is is 10 on it is 10 on the field 11 uh with an asterisk okay so it is yes so so texas state has never beaten uh the raging cages um what uh give me a player defensively that if the Cajuns are going to win this ball game, he's going to have a big ball game. Yeah, I mean, I think you, you got to look at the secondary, right? And, and how are how's Texas State going to test those guys? And, and Keon Martin has has proven himself. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, I think has just had a well of a season, uh, not only in, in the past game as as a cornerback, uh, but coming up in the run game. And and so I'm going to give you a position group, right? I, I think it's him, Justin Agu, uh, and and that secondary. Uh, back there kind of really having to maintain and, and you know, keep up with these fast paced um, Texas state the Bobcats. And that will go hand in hand, obviously uh, with if the Cajuns can develop a pass rush, right. And, and maybe Cam Whitfield come alive, Texas state, those only surrendered eight sacks all season. Again, yeah. a lot of that's a product of they get the ball out very quickly. Um, but, you know, I, I think it, this is going to be a game for, you know, for, for the defensive backs that are really going to have to play a large role in this one. We've had a few games like this in the Sun Belt this year. Uh, you know, as you mentioned, Old Dominion, boy, just destroyed Georgia Southern. Uh, we've had some East-West, show, um, some showdowns in each division. We don't have a lot of these uh, on a regular basis. Um, it feels like there's been a dominant team, um, you know, in each division, either whether it be Coastal Carolina or JMU uh, or the Cajuns or South Alabama recently. Um, 
it, it does feel like this West is wide open, and I think it's a lot of fun what is on ESPN2, nationally televised ball game, uh, 6.30 Central Time, 7.30 Eastern Time. Not digging that Eastern Time Zone. No, sir. That's, 30, a, that's no, a bad that change not, for you, my friend. That is not good. That is not that is not good for me getting up early uh, and having to go to work. Um, but it just kind of feels fun. I, I know when I, you know, even in minor league ball once in a while, you get these, you know, big time pitching matchups of these prospects, you know, like the number two prospect in the Tigers against the number one prospect in the Braves or something like that. And you get excited about it. Uh, this feels like this has that kind of juice um, with uh, only the World Series. And we won't go there, especially with your play by play announcer. I don't want to hear about that at all. Um, uh, that, you know, this is the only football game going on tonight. Right. I think it's going to be a lot of fun and I'm hoping for a good ball game. I think it's going to be a good ball game. Turnovers can sometimes, you know, sure. it can spin out of control. But having said that, I think it should be a good ball game. I presume it'll be a one score ball game unless a team scores late at the end to make it a two score game. Yeah. I, look, I, I think both teams are going to come in here and throw the kitchen sink at each other, right? Understanding the importance uh, of the matchup, you know, as you, as we've noted, right, this game's been circled on both calendars for a really long time um coming into the season and you know it's uh, the they've done a great job texas state has the community of rallying behind gj kinney and and the bobcats i think they've had two home sellouts i would totally expect tonight to be a third and um i know it's going to be a, a well of an atmosphere and um yeah it's it's you know both teams are going to whoever the winner is, is going to have to play really really well right um and, and to come out on top and i, I expect nothing but just a, a really hard foot hard fought tough sunbelt conference football game he is Cody Juno. He is the uh, Raging Cajuns radio analyst on the Raging Cajuns radio network. Appreciate him coming on to preview the Bobcats and the Raging Cajuns tonight, ESPN2. Just remind uh, J-Dub, Jay Walker, the Braves were leading the Yankees two games to none and going back to Atlanta in 1996. In this case, the Yankees are headed back to Yankee Stadium. The series ain't over. Just say it. Okay, Mr. Yankee. Well, Dodgers are trying to see if they can win a World Series for the first time in a full season. So we'll see what oh, happens there. Since since 81. Oh, that's, that's right. right. It's been a minute. When was the last time they won one in a full season? That's true. There you go. You got to go back to, I, was it 81? I, I don't know. No, well, no 81 was a strike season. That was the strike season. So we're <laughs> so, talking like Koufax, like 66 or something? Well, uh, you know, I, we'll have to research that one at another time. But yes. All right. That's, that's right. a different podcast. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> I appreciate your time, Cody. Thank you so much. You got it, buddy.